Welcome to the TTT News Special. I'm DK Ronstar. Now, I'm not going to sing to start off this on a, on a wrong note, literally, but music have no friend, no enemy. Everybody could dingle I mean, it's always a good moment to invoke Winston Bailey, but we say that the Emancipation Support Committee of Trinidad and Tobago invites you to join them for a virtual panel discussion as part of the 2021 Kwame Ture Memorial Lecture Series. And it's happening the specific event that we'll be speaking about happens on the 11th of July, which is a Sunday at 2 p.m. We are joined by Director of Education and Research at the Emancipation Support Committee of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Claudius Fergus, and he joins us to tell us more. Dr. Fergus, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you, and uh, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Now, we're going from the ground up. Uh, what is the importance of... Uh, Stokely Carmichael's of Kwame Ture's importance in world history? Well, as you know, Kwame Ture was one of the frontline leaders of the civil rights movement in the United States, beginning as a teenager, you know, coming out of Howard University and uh, building from the ground up. He was involved with other keynote leaders of the movement, including you know, the great civil rights leader, Dr. Luther King, Malcolm X, and so many others. He was a, a, a key figure in the founding and inspiration of the Black Panthers as well. You know, he became prime minister of the Black Panthers movement. So uh, in addition, of course, to having given uh, that important, um, those two important words, black power, you know, not only to the United States, but to the Caribbean and to the world. And I would like to add that raised fist, which also accompanied, you know, the cry of black power. Even today, wherever you have mass protest movements, you would see people with their upraised fists that remind you of the leadership role that Kwame Ture played in the United States and, uh, and, uh, and in, the, in, the, in the diaspora, you know, because he was in the in West Africa as well, you know, fighting anti-colonial anti -colonial struggles over there as well. You know, he spent quite a few years uh, in West Africa and teamed up with people like um, Kwame, like um, his namesake, you know, Kwame Nkrumah as well, and Sekou Touré, uh, both African leaders, you know, uh, who would have contributed to the changing of his name from Stokely Carmichael to Kwame Ture. And one of the things I look at and, and remember, uh, as almost like a charge to myself, Dr. Fergus, is the distinction that he makes between mobilization and organization. As opposed, uh, so mobilization, you do something, you feel good, you have some people come in for a while, and you can talk about it, but what really lingers or what happens after? How do you develop from it? Organization, on the other hand, you lay the groundwork for further things to come. And with that in mind, one of the things that the Emancipation Support Committee has organized is the Kwame Ture Memorial Lecture. So what are some of the previous lecture series? What are some of the topics that have been covered in the previous lecture series? Well, we have, this, this series goes back to the early 1990s, actually, under the name of the Emancipation Lecture Series. And we have had, you know, a number of world-renowned scholars and scholar activists, including Kwame Ture himself, I believe around 1995. And after his passing, the, the, the series was renamed in his honor, the Kwame Ture Memorial Lecture Series. Um, we have had um, personalities such as Tony Martin, our own uh, Tony Martin, Professor Tony Martin, Ambassador Dudley Thompson, of course, one of the great uh, Pan-Africanists of the 1960s and 70s. Uh, computing genius, Dr. Philip Emiagwali, who is Nigerian born. And uh, his lecture is still available on YouTube. We have had uh, pioneering African-American Egyptologist, Dr. Anthony Browder as late as uh, 2019, the year just before we had to shut down for COVID. Yes, 2019, Dr. Anthony Browder. And uh, of course, uh, we are grateful to have had Dr. Professor Emeritus 
uh, Rupert Lewis just last Sunday uh, with an amazing lecture. The word amazing actually was, was used about three times by uh, Dr. Rohn Fraser of the United States. You know, he was so impressed with that lecture, which was titled 100 Years from Marcus Darby to, Pome, to, to Black Lives Matter, from, from uh, Marcus Garvey to Black Lives Matter. You know, so he would have put Marcus Garvey in a particular framework of the early post-war mobilization of disgruntled and disaffected returning veterans who would have been largely responsible for uh, a series of anti-colonial protests culminating in the 1930s. Uh, with a number of uprisings and strikes and so on that we know all too well, particularly associated with Chubel, Uriah, Butler, and others in Trinidad and Tobago. But Mr. Fri so but Dr. The Fergus, though, spectrum we have had. and looking looking at that spectrum, Dr. Fergus, one of the things that you or two things that you raised, one uh, one of those talks from the lecture series is still available on YouTube. And then you also spoke about the effects of the pandemic in terms of curtailing some of your efforts. And thirdly, you spoke of a lecturer from the United States being able to say that this lecture, this talk, this presentation it gave was amazing. So I have two questions in, on this side of the, on, on the break. One, what has the movement to a more virtual presentation done for the reach of the, of the lecture series and also uh, what are some of the things that you're looking at to impact? And does that happen a little differently now because it's not as physical? You come in back after the break or you are asking? You no, I'm asking you now, thank you. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Right, so in terms of COVID, um, COVID was a big challenge to us. You know, we were determined, however, to ensure that the Pan-African Festival uh, came off, even if in a modified form. But the Kwame Ture Memorial Lecture Series went on practically in its full format. That is, uh, we had about five different sessions, including the launch, you know. But last year, we did not have a feature speaker. Uh, we had a panel discussion uh, for the launch and four other panel discussions after that. Uh, this year, we went back to as close as possible to the traditional format with a keynote speaker. And uh, we had, as I mentioned, uh, Professor Emeritus uh, Rupert Lewis of UE Jamaica, and he was based in Jamaica. So uh, we have been able to keep the, the Comitore Memorial Legacy like series going, even though some events would have had to be curtailed. So the, the COVID restrictions have had a tremendous impact on the celebration of the Pan-African Festival. For example, the Transatlantic um, Trade Forum uh, has, would have had to be suspended last year and this year as well. So it would have affected us in different ways. But as you inferred, we would have had some positives coming out of it, and that is in terms of the reach and the reach that we had been able to achieve by going virtual. For example, we can have panelists from across the Pan African world uh, without having them travel to Trinidad and Tobago as we would have had to do, so that we can engage a wider range of scholars and scholar activists uh, to share uh, their experiences with us uh, during this time of the Pan-African Festival. And we thank you, Dr. Uh, Fergus. We take a short break. We come back because we want to know who are some of the panelists that are on board for the 11th of July. So stay with us. We'll return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking with Dr. Claudius Fergus of the Emancipation Support Committee of Trinidad and Tobago about the Kwame Ture Memorial Lecture Series. Now, Dr. Fergus, coming up on the 11th, what is the title of that talk or that discussion? Let me tell you how the title will fit into 
the broader theme, which is advancing Pan-African solidarity towards a balanced world. That's the theme of this year's Pan-African Festival. But I also want you to know that the African Union last year declared 2021 as the AU Year of the Arts, Culture, and Heritage Levers for Building the Africa We Want. And you would see where the first two panels that follow the launch fit nicely and promote uh, both of these themes. So to the first panel after the launch, which is the one coming up on, on the 11th, that's Sunday coming, uh, and you already indicated the title, Music Get No Enemy, Rhythm, Sound, and Soul as Tools for Pan-African Solidarity. As Music Get No Enemy, Rhythm, soul, rhythm Sound, and Soul as Tools for Pan-African Solidarity. Uh, the session would be on a Zoom platform and uh, coming across live as well on Facebook. It's a fantastic uh, panel of specialists from the Caribbean and uh, motherland Africa as well. And, and as I indicated, that's one of the advantages of going virtual, that we can embrace uh, all parts of the diaspora very, very easily. Uh, from Trinidad and Tobago, we have brother David Rudder. I don't think he needs any introduction, being a composer, renowned Calypsonian with so many Pan-African um, tunes as well, and uh, including uh, Rally Around the West Indies. And I'm sure you would agree with me that we can do with some of that morale right now. <laughs> and of course, anyone who plays cricket would know what I mean. There's Dr. Killer Francis, who is a lecturer at the University of the West Indies. Brother Wendell Manwaring, who is a singer, producer, songwriter, teacher, director, and so many other things. And from the continent, we have Brother Rocky Dawuni of Ghana. And he's a singer, a songwriter, and a record producer. Uh, interestingly, Dawuni fits into his music. He's a pioneer of a fusion of musical genres of Ghana, Nigeria, Jamaica, and the United States. Namely, uh, at the Afrobeat of Nigeria, a uh, high life of Ghana, reggae, of course, Jamaica, and soul. And if you want to see the type of, of um, performer that he is, and, and, uh, and if you want to see how he blends these various genres, you can uh, look for Shine a Light. Shine a Light, one of his most popular tunes, which was released in 2015. That's Shine a Light, Rocky Dawumi. And uh, we have from Zambia, Brother Matthew Tembe. He is a musician, and he would be a special guest on the panel, which will be moderated by Sister Attila Springer. Again, Attila perhaps doesn't need any introduction. She is a writer, communications uh, professional, cultural worker, and a well-known activist and DJ uh, in Trinidad and Tobago as well. So that's the composition of the panel, uh, DK. And what's the significance of having a medium without an enemy? Because music get no enemy. Or uh, using a medium without an enemy to use as a vehicle helping to articulate complex feelings or problematic issues? Well, if you understand the history of the diaspora, especially in this part of the world, I think you get a sense of how uh, music was used uh, as a tool of resistance in uniting all the various ethnic groups uh, that were thrown together in uh, the colonial plantations, not only in the Caribbean, but in the continent, in North America, in Latin America. And it is in this context where you see music as a pan-African tool for uniting groups that spoke different languages, that um, had even varying aspects of cultural differences and so on, but they were able to relate to music. The drum, perhaps one of the key instruments, which was universal to all of them, and the rhythm of the drum, so rhythm and sound we can just insert drum there, the rhythm and sound of drum, and the drum 
of course, as an instrument of struggle as well, not only struggle in terms of anti-slavery struggle, but even in the post-slavery era, when the colonial system was extremely hostile to African uh, freedom and, uh, and civil rights as well. So the drum, remember the drum was banned in so many different colonies as well, including Trinidad and Tobago. The banning of the drum we know in Trinidad would have given rise to Tambu Bambu, for example. So that we have these instruments coming out of, um, of, of the, the drum alone, including, of course, the emergence of the steel band, you know, in the 1930s, 1940s. So that element, we are not saying music is the only one. Of course, music and song go together, and dance as well go along with music. So music, sound, and dance together would have been tools for bringing Africans together, no matter what part of the continent they came from, no matter what language they spoke, and no matter what cultures uh, they would have come from. So in, moving in so Africa. moving so moving past the things like the tracing that timeline of music from drum to tambu bamboo to steel pan or as some people call it Ogun's bell. Uh, in terms of that two minutes that we have, I know that people are looking at where it is they put their coins, where it is they put their pennies, who they partner with. So I want to give you the opportunity to name some of your partners, who are some of the people helping this uh, to come off this initiative to happen, as well as once again, giving us those platforms that people can use to engage with the talks. Uh, I believe you mentioned Facebook, Zoom, and YouTube. So asking for that once more before we close, thanks. Right. OK. So we, we were assisted in uh, mobilizing the African um, panelists uh, by the ECOSOP, that is uh, an arm of the African Union. So we are grateful to the African Union for that. Uh, we have always partnered with the Ministry of Culture, and uh, we are doing so again this year, and of course, the National Lotteries Control Board. So those are the main um, partners that we need to recognize and, and that we are grateful to. Uh, we are live on Zoom and Facebook, and uh, after the panel, you can log on to YouTube, where we will be uploading that particular presentation, and it would be there for you uh, for the future. If you want further details, you can, of course, go to the ESCTT's Facebook page or its website, or you can just call uh, call this number, 480-1775. That's 480-1775. And a member of the Emancipation Support Committee Secretariat would provide whatever other information that you would want. Okay, and final minute. If you if you log into Facebook or Zoom, you're able to engage in terms of ask questions that will be thrown towards the panel by the moderator. Is that possible? Yes, definitely. We are not only live but interactive as well, and uh, people can uh, speak directly to the moderator, through the moderator, of course. If you are on Zoom, or you can post your questions and they would be forwarded uh, to the moderator if you are on Facebook. All right, so we want to thank you so much, Dr. Fergus, Dr. Claudia Fergus of the Emancipation Support Community. Claudius, Claudius, Claudius. Yes, man. Oh, my apologies. And we want to thank you for making the time to give us an idea of what we can expect, what we can look forward to on the 11th so people can avail themselves, be a part of it, and get some food for thought. And on behalf of the entire news team... But let me just slip in a little piece. Huh? You can look forward to another exciting panel on the 18th on music, because we are saying the arts, and so on music and uh, on, on film now. So we move from music to film, African film. So. You know, thanks for allowing me to throw in a little bit there. No problem. The and we want to thank you for tuning into the TTT News Special. Have a good one.